Hello, hello folks, and welcome back to my channel. Today, finally, we are talking about polishing and maintenance for brass, silver, and metal body jewelry, specifically hangers and such for your lobes. Worth noting, this video is not about how to care for your titanium, your steel, the stuff you wear in your piercings, and it's also not how to care for your wood, stone, horn, or organic material plugs and hangers. This video is exclusively care for hangers and ear weights that are going to be made of brass or silver. If you want to see me do videos about care and maintenance for other materials, let me know in the comments down below. If you own any pairs of really gorgeous brass or silver hangers, you know that when you purchase them right away, they are stunning. They're so shiny, they're so bright, they're beautiful, but after a couple of weeks or months of sitting in your bathroom or in your jewelry case, they start to look pretty dull and not nearly as nice as they did when you got them. So how do you bring that shine back safely? Let's talk about it, polishing and maintaining your ear weights and hangers. Now my first big tip is actually storage. It's nothing to do with the care of the pieces themselves, it's really just where you keep them. So a lot of jewelry can patina or oxidize, so if, with exposure to air and oftentimes humidity, they'll build up this darker finish on the metal that's just not as desirable for many people as the shiny bright brass that they had or silver that they had when they got it. And a really big way to have this happen to your earrings and your weights less is to not keep them in your bathroom. I know a lot of folks find the bathroom to be a really convenient storage place for your earrings and your ear weights and stuff, but the bathroom is going to be very humid. Hot showers, hot baths, all of the stuff that goes on there, and that moisture and humidity is going to increase the rate at which your stuff is going to patina and have these things happen to it. So keep your stuff out of the bathroom. Keep it in the bedroom, keep it in a box, in a closet, but don't store it in the bathroom where it's super humid. Now that being said, kind of no matter where you store your stuff, with enough time, your stuff is going to get patinaed or oxidized anyway. And the solution to fixing that is polishing. Now my hands down favorite thing to use is going to be a sunshine cloth. These days a lot of companies will send you polishing cloths with the pieces that they sell you. I know I have a couple polishing cloths from Diablo Organics. In this video I'm going to be using one that I believe was sent to me by Dendrite Labs um, with one of my orders, but sunshine cloths are hands down my favorite. I'm going to put a link um, to the Amazon listing for my favorite, like absolute favorite sunshine cloths in the comments of this video, um, but those are the best thing that you can use for polishing your weights hands down. You'll see online sometimes people will talk about using ketchup to polish brass and silver. You can do that. It does work. It's very messy. I find that it doesn't work nearly as well as just a sunshine cloth and some elbow grease does. Uh, and it's really hard if you have an intricate pair of weights and earrings to clean out of all of those crevices and everything just kind of smells like ketchup. Uh, and yes, I have I've tried that method in the past just to just as an experiment to see how it worked uh, and I wasn't really that impressed. Um, I do much prefer a sunshine cloth for polishing and I will also say that the cloths that some companies send aren't always as good as like a true sunshine cloth. Now one other caveat before I get into actually doing the polishing is that a lot of companies do make weights and hangers that are plated. Um, so especially Maya Organics and Tawapa are the two big ones that come to mind. A lot of their rose gold and yellow gold hangers are plated and this is because to do a solid pair of you know gigantic eight inch diameter hangers and solid gold would be tens of thousands of dollars if not hundreds of thousands of dollars but to do them in brass with a gold plate over them to give the look of gold is significantly significantly more affordable they can retail for you know hundreds of dollars instead of hundreds of thousands of dollars and still give people the look of the bright gold finish that they want if you do have a plated pair, a sunshine cloth will polish off the plating. You will remove the gold or rose gold plating from that pair and you will just expose the brass underneath. So if your piece is plated, this is not how you should care for them um, unless you are willing to risk polishing off the gold plate. Um, so please be mindful, take a look at the pairs that you have, double check with the manufacturer's website. If it's plated, don't use a sunshine cloth on it to polish it. And really quick before anyone is like, but then I thought plated jewelry was bad. Plated jewelry is bad inside of healing body piercings. But when we're talking about ear weights or hangers, they are A, short-term wear, so you're only wearing them for a couple of hours. B, a lot of times they're going to be worn through eyelets and plugs and things like that, so they're not going to come in contact with your ears. And C, the companies who are doing plated hangers are using plating methods that are safe and oftentimes nickel-free, and they're plating them over nickel-free brass or high-quality silver, so it's still safe to wear. If one of those companies came 
came out with like plated posts for your nostril, absolutely not. I would not be down with that. But ear weights are a little bit of a different story because of how long-term temporary wear they are. And that's also why you'll see people wearing ear weights made of materials like bone and horn and wood, materials that are totally practical in a large stretch piercing, but are totally impractical when we're talking about your teeny tiny 18 gauge nostril piercing. So different piercings, different requirements as far as jewelry and safety, and especially the temporary nature of weights and hangers only being worn for a few hours, and safe plating process is being used, it's okay. Just don't accidentally polish off your plating because you watch this video. Please, I'll be very sad. So for actual polishing, all you really need to do is set yourself up with a sunshine cloth, the weights you need to polish, a little bit of patience, and some strong ready-to-go fingers. Honestly, this is pretty simple. All I'm gonna do is open up my sunshine cloth. This one is a two-layer cloth, so on the inside there's a thicker white cloth that has a little bit of polishing compound in it, and on the outside there's a thinner, softer black cloth. So I'm gonna go in with this white cloth first, and just with a medium pressure, I'm gonna start gently rubbing down all the sides of the hangers. And you'll see I'm just kind of gently curving around and following the curvature of the outer loop of this pair from Maya. This is a solid silver pair, so as you can see it's patinaed very, very dark. Silver tends to go much darker than brass does. Uh, and if I'm being honest, I haven't polished these in a long time. A very long time. Don't be like me. Um, but yeah, you can see me just kind of going around the piece, kind of following the curvature of the piece, and just kind of working my way through with the inside of this polishing cloth. And you can see already how bright and how silver this is turning. And if we take a look for comparison, we've got our polished weight and we've got our completely unpolished weight and look at that difference. The smooth, wearable, and loop section is completely bright and shiny white silver again. And then that middle piece did already have some antiquing on it and it has some texture. So so the high ridges of the little details and decorative designs got polished and then the recess parts stay patinaed and dark, um, which I really like with this design. So I just did a light polish over the top to just kind of brighten up the high points, but what a difference. So now let's just polish the matching one. All right, so take a look, here they are. They are both polished, they are both looking brilliant. I cannot get over how nice this pair came out. Now I'm gonna do some polishing on some brass. These are my Ghost in the Shell weights from Dendrite Labs. I absolutely love them and they polish up so brilliantly. Um, so again, I'm doing the same thing I did on that pair from Maya and I'm just kind of following the curvature. I'm using a moderate amount of pressure. Um, I'm not just like wiping over it. I am pressing a little bit hard, but I'm being careful, you know, not to put undue pressure on the weight. I don't wanna break it. I don't wanna damage it. And with this one, since this one has a stone set in it, I'm being really cautious and gentle around the setting of the stone. Now I tried my best to get this brass to show up on camera and kind of no matter what I did or what lighting I took it in, I couldn't get a good capture of it, but I promise you in person, the polished one looks so much brighter and more reflective. I can actually see my reflection clearly in it. Whereas in the one that I haven't polished yet, you can't just really make out like vague shapes and it's just not nearly as shiny and reflective as the polished one. Honestly, if I have a ton of jewelry to polish, my favorite thing to do is sit down with a movie or a couple episodes of a show that I want to watch or a really good podcast or audio book, take out all my weights that I need, sit down with my sunshine cloth and just get to work. It is time consuming, especially the more pairs you have and getting a good polish does take, I would say for me, anywhere from five to 20 minutes per piece in a pair, depending on the complexity and size of the piece. Uh, and it's just a lot about patience and just sitting there and taking the time to really polish up all those nooks and crannies. But I find it to be a really meditative process and I love getting to look at my pieces afterwards and how shiny and bright and new they look. As far as how often to polish your weights, that's really gonna depend on you, how often you're wearing them, how you're storing them, not in the bathroom, and also the climate you live in. When I lived in Florida, which was far more humid, I had to polish my weights almost every time I wore them. They would start to turn that quickly. Now that I'm living back in Pennsylvania, a polish will hold on my weights for months and months on end because it's not nearly as humid here as it was in Florida. 
generally for me I end up polishing the whole set about twice a year if I'm being good I'm not always being good but if I have a particular pair that I know I want to wear and is really in need of some love I'll just plan some extra time when I'm getting ready that morning to do a quick polish and just kind of brighten things up for the day Sometimes I won't even polish the whole weight. I'll just polish the part that's going to be showing. For example, with my cicadas from Blessings to You, a lot of times I'll just polish the wings. I actually kind of like how the patina looks built up on the body and the kind of like grungy, earthy feel that it gives to it. So very often I'll leave the body very patinaed and I'll only polish the wings. And I have some pairs in my collection that I prefer the look of patinaed or oxidized and I never polish them because I just think they look good like that dark antiqued finish. I just love how it looks for that pair. There's no rules that say that you have to polish every pair of weights that you have or how often you have to do it. If you get a pair and you find that you like it better with that patina or that oxidization on it, leave it, rock it. If you decide that you like it better polished and shiny, get that sunshine cloth and some elbow grease and get going. The big things to remember with polishing and maintaining your weights is to store them in a place that's going to be clean and dry, where they're not going to deal with a bunch of humidity. Be smart about which weights you polish and don't. Double check first and make sure you're polishing a pair that's safe for you to do so and you're not going to accidentally polish off any plating. And take your time with it. Polishing is not a fast process, especially not with a sunshine cloth, but it does get you the absolute best finish and you don't have to do everything all at once. Maybe just a pair or two at a time and you know you're going to be wearing them. I'm not gonna lie, between all the hecticness of my life that has been going on for the past like year and a half, my whole collection is overdue for a polish and every time I look at it and how much I have and how much it'll take for me to polish, I just don't polish it. <laughs> but I was kind of thinking maybe one rainy day I'll just sit down in front of the open window or on my balcony and make like an ASMR polishing video and just polish like 20 or 30 pairs over the course of a few hours and pop that up. I've had a couple folks ask me to do ASMR content. I don't know why. I don't feel like I have an ASMR voice or anything, but people have asked. So if you want to see me do that, let me know in the comments down below. If you want to see me make a video about the maintenance and care for things like wood and horn plugs, oiling them and caring for them, and about the maintenance and care of things like your regular titanium and gold jewelry for your piercings and keeping those clean, uh, let me know in the comments down below and maybe I could do a whole like cleaning and jewelry maintenance series if folks are really interested. Anyway, if you like the content I'm putting out, please hit like and subscribe. Thanks for hanging out with me while I polish some weights today and I'm sure we will sit down together soon. Bye.